<clears throat> so here's a uh, dome-shaped papule. And, and how can we tell it's dome-shaped? Well, look, here's where the normal skin is, right along here. And we can't see the normal skin over here, but it probably would have gone right around there. So this is like a, a papule, it's sessile, kind of pushed up and almost polypoid, but with kind of a flat base. And um, you can uh, see basaloid islands in the middle here, some cystic spaces filled with keratin. So again, the first thought you might think is basal cell carcinoma, it's basaloid, right? But the stroma here is quite different than basal cell carcinoma. The stroma here is very pink and collagenous and relatively cellular. It's got a lot of, uh, of kind of plump fibroblasts that are, are filling in the space between the collagen. And something that the, the, the stroma is doing here that is unusual for basal cell is that the stroma is wrapping closely around these basaloid islands. They're tightly invested in this stroma. Whereas in a basal cell carcinoma, the stroma tends to separate away with that cleft filled with mucin. Um, and uh, we, that's a, like a, why I really like the clefting um, and mucin filled spaces as a really supportive, helpful sign for basal cell uh, carcinoma. So when I see a, a pink kind of cellular spindled stroma um, in the setting of a basaloid tumor, I instantly start thinking, could this be a benign hair follicle tumor? So that to me is one of the most helpful clues is seeing that and the lack of the mucin filled clefts um, that makes me start thinking of uh, a different type of, of hair follicle tumors, okay? And then the best thing though, and you don't always find it, but when you do, it's great, is this right here. So what is this, this structure called? And this one, and this one, does anyone know? I'll give you a minute to type it into the, yeah, there we go. Papillary mesenchymal bodies, exactly. So what these are, these cells look round, but if you do a keratin stain here, they're gonna be negative. They will be negative. These cells, the basaloid cells are keratin positive, but these cells are actually stromal cells. And yeah, you can use uh, CD10, CD34. There are different things to highlight some of the different cells in, um, in uh, follicular neoplasms. But usually with practice, you can just tell by looking at them, I think on H&E much of the time. So these cells though are actually these kind of oval to round stromal cells and they're clumping up and aggregating next to the basaloid nest and they push in and kind of invaginate and push into the nest of basaloid cells. When I find that, I think that is the most helpful slam dunk feature to support a benign hair follicle tumor such as trichoepithelioma as someone uh, pointed out in the, the chat box, good. So yeah, I would call this a trichoepithelioma and I will show you these papillary mesenchymal bodies, they're analogous to the hair papilla. So what's a hair papilla? It is, let me find it. If we go find the normal hair, in this case, this is a little baby vellus hair, a tiny hair. Look at what's happening down here. We see these spindle to oval to round stromal cells and they're all clumping up and clustering right underneath the blue basaloid cells of the little hair root, the hair germ cells. And if you look down at big, deep antigen hairs, the big hairs that you see in the scalp, look way down in the subcutis, you'll see the same thing happening. You'll see them actually pushing all the way in and forming a little bulb or a little, a little like round structure that pushes into the hair root. And that's where the, there, there are cells there that basically control and regulate growth of the hair follicle. But what's happening in trichoepithelioma and other hair follicle tumors is that you're getting, this is getting recapitulated by the tumor. And these structures are get, get more pronounced and we call them papillary mesenchymal bodies. The other thing is that if you look at normal hair, um, hair uh, follicle, and I wish I would have put in a, a slide with that, but a normal hair follicle usually has its own little layer of dense collagen and um, spindle cells that wrap around the hair follicle. And we call that the adventitia. The stroma of hair follicle tumors is similar and analogous to that adventitia. It's like the same kind of cells and collagen, just a lot more of it. So again, that's what I kind of like about, about hair follicle tumors is that they are, are resembling the different normal parts of the normal hair follicle. And normal hair follicles have a lot of different parts to them. And it was one of the last parts of normal skin uh, microscopic anatomy that I actually was able to learn. It took me a longer time to master that because there's so many different layers and it changes at each level as you go from the root up to the top of the hair follicle. So how do you decide to call it trichoepithelioma? Well, trichoepitheliomas tend to be small and, and centered in the dermis. They oftentimes connect up to the epidermis or connect to normal hair follicles. They oftentimes have cystic spaces filled with keratin like so. 
And sometimes you can even see little bits of hair shaft in there too. And um, <clears throat> there are some people who say, well, there's no such thing as trichoepithelioma. They're all trichoblastomas. And again, this is one of those times where we're making, up, we're making distinctions about what name to call thing, and it doesn't really matter. A trichoepithelioma is a benign hair follicle tumor. So is a trichoblastoma. So whichever name you want to call it, it doesn't matter. I, I, my understanding is that Dr. Ackerman, Bernie Ackerman, I think he didn't believe, I hope I'm not, not uh, misquoting him, but I believe that, that he didn't, didn't like the term trichoepithelioma. He thought these were just a variant of trichoblastoma, which they very well probably are. I think they're all on a spectrum together. Um, so in a, again, at, when I teach, I like to split, but in real life, I'm a bit more of a lumper where I, I lump things together. If they're all benign and, and hair follicles, then whatever name you call it is not really that important um, as long as the dermatologist and the surgeon knows how to treat the patient. So to me, when I find good stroma like this and papillary mesenchymal bodies, I feel comfortable saying this is a benign hair follicle tumor. There are some people that believe that there are variants of basal cell carcinoma that can have papillary mesenchymal bodies. I, I personally don't hold to that view. I've never seen a convincing case of something that I thought was truly a basal cell carcinoma that looked like this. I have seen rare examples in people with uh, unusual syndromes where they have a lot of adexal tumors. I've seen rare examples of carcinoma growing out of a benign trichoepithelioma or trichoblastoma. In those cases, one part of the tumor looked benign and the other part looked malignant. So it happens because it's very rare though. So the, the bigger problem is when they look like this, it's great and everyone can be happy, okay? And also it's great when this is from like a young adult, but what if this is from an 80 year old person with sun damaged skin? and you're really worried it's a basal cell carcinoma. Well, if I've got a good biopsy and it looks like this, I'm still comfortable calling it trichoepithelioma. But in an older sun damaged person, it's got to be perfect trichoepithelioma for me to say that definitively. The bigger problem is a lot of times we'll get a shave biopsy, you know, like this. And we'll get some basaloid islands and I get a little bit of that stroma and I think, well, that could be a trichoep, but I really can't see the whole thing. And it's on the nose and they're old. So do I send them for Mohs surgery or do I say, leave it alone? You know, I don't wanna be wrong in either direction. I don't want them to have surgery on their nose or, or their eyelid that they don't need, but I also don't want to, to blow it off and then it cause a bigger problem. <clears throat> so in that setting, if I'm not sure, I'll say this is a basaloid neoplasm. And I, I say that I can't tell for sure, but I favor that it's a benign follicular, but it's you know part of a bigger lesion. If it persists, they might need to go back and take it out. Sometimes the dermatologist will say, I wanna just take it out anyway. The other thing you can do is there are a variety of stains that people try. Someone mentioned FLADA1, P-H-L-D-A-1. I've never tried it, I've read papers and the papers look really good that it's very strongly helpful in distinguishing basal cell carcinoma from benign hair follicle tumors, but I don't have it in my lab yet, so I don't have any personal experience with it. Uh, the other thing, the one stain that I've, I have found to be helpful in this setting, um, because most, most of the stains that are reported are a matter of, well, there's more staining here around the edge of the tumor and less around the middle, or this is stronger or weaker. And I feel like those kinds of stains are very subjective to interpret. And I like stains when I'm using a diagnostic stain to help me tell benign from malignant or something like that. I want a stain to be like, this is strong diffuse positive, that or totally negative. Obviously, that's the most ideal situation when we can have a stain that's really binary like that. So the, I try to always look for those stains. So one thing I have found helpful though is cytokeratin 20. CK20 will tend to stain Merkel cells, passenger Merkel cells that are scattered and hanging out in the midst of these basaloid islands. They'll be kind of scattered all throughout um, the tumor. And that's a common finding in benign hair follicle tumors, but usually is absent in basal cell carcinoma. So sometimes I will do that and do a cytokeratin 20 to see if they're scattered Merkel cell passengers. And again, that not Merkel cell carcinoma, we're just talking about normal Merkel cells that live sometimes in the basal layer of the epidermis. They also live in hair follicles and hair follicle tumors tend to have um, a, a little group of passenger ones hanging out in the midst. I think I've tweeted a picture of that before, if I recall, maybe not, but I don't have it handy right here. So I'll, I'll have to pull that up and show you later. Again, look, another closer view papillary mesenchymal bodies. See, this is the island of epithelioid, bas the basaloid epithelial cells. This is the papillary mesenchymal body. And sometimes they're very subtle and you, they don't make a perfect nodule that pushes into the island. Sometimes they just clump and cluster. So with practice, you can begin to recognize them. Here's a papillary mesenchymal body too. You can barely see there's a little tiny wisp of the basaloid island. Basically, you're getting this structure here, but cutting it at like an angle like that. 
So learning to see in three dimensions is, uh, is a tricky thing to do, particularly in hair follicle tumors. But with practice, you can begin to recognize it and you'll get a feel and say, oh, that's going to be a papillary mesenchymal body. All right, we've, we've talked enough about trichoepithelium.